Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Carmel Codes, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I mainly make YouTube tutorials about coding. In this tutorial, we're going to go over getting Spotify data, in this case playlists. You don't need a backend for this, we're just going to call on the Spotify API directly with Axios, which is a promise-based HTTP client for the browser and Node.js using the auth tokens we stored last time. To make this code work, you need to have Spotify authorization. Um, aka login implemented, which I outlined in the previous video. So go ahead and check that out if you don't have that um, set up already. Together, we're going to create this basic functional component called Spotify Get Playlist, which is just a simple button that after pressed should display the playlist for the account that you just logged into. Now, for this API to work, the playlist has to be public. If the playlist is private and unfortunately won't show up, this is an important detail for when you're testing your code. If you do want to view private playlists, you'll have to add the playlist read private to the scopes variable from the last video. I'll add some more detail in the description if you need help with this step, but in the beginning of this tutorial, we're just going to go over literally how to call on the Spotify API. Now this method that we're going to do in the video could be applied to any of the Spotify sort of APIs that you're looking for. So playlists, getting albums, probably be translated however which way once you know um, the fundamentals. So first thing I'm going to do is open up my little web app page. If this code were going to production, I'd probably want to extract all this logic for the Spotify login button into a separate component called Spotify login button. For this tutorial, I'm just going to move right along and skip that and make a new component called Spotify get playlist. And then I create a components folder near my web app and inside it create another folder called Spotify get playlist. This will be a button that simply says get playlist. All right, next thing we're going to do is import Axios. If you don't have Axios installed already, you can do npm install Axios uh, and press enter. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Um, instead, I'm just going to directly import it now. Import Axios from Axios. All right. And then after that, I'm going to create a couple of uh, state variables so that we can store the data that we get from Spotify. Um, a couple of those tokens or data is going to be uh, the token itself from last time and the data from Spotify. So cons token set token, which is the function that we're going to use to actually set the token. So do you state empty hook or empty string? data here is going to be the uh, data from Spotify and its default is going to be an empty object. Next, I'm going to use the use effect hook to actually get our uh, token from local storage. I did not store this in Firebase, instead I just use uh, local storage um, as a faster, simpler solution. All right, and because of this empty dependencies array, this is only going to run once when we open up a uh, web app. If you need a little review, this access token was from 
uh, higher up in our web app over here where we set access token from the get returned params from Spotify auth, uh, that URL up in the top. Now I'm going to move on to, to creating the handle get playlist function, which we're going to call when we actually press the button. So where I actually got this URL from is uh, the Spotify documentation itself. It seems like their documentation is under construction right now. Like um, they had this like newer one and then uh, where you can actually like play around with different types of data. So let me just try and find it real quick. Here's a quick start, but I'm looking for the um console is it over here support console yeah i think this is like their newer documentation um so if i go to playlists and then i do get this is uh the endpoint that i am using in my app and really i should move this up to a const so i'm gonna go ahead and do that An endpoint is another name for like an API, like some route where you can get information from. So just to avoid any typos, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just copy this directly. Cool. So I'm gonna open up Safari's dev console here so we can see our network requests okay um so we do this axios.get which is going to initiate a get request towards this endpoint which we got from the spotify uh, documentation also feel free to play around with the sample data um i, I find it very useful uh, for developing and just exploring so would highly recommend it if we just tried this alone uh, odds are Spotify will re reject the request because it doesn't have the proper tokens. So let's go ahead and add a custom object uh, with a key of headers. As you can see, this was a property given to us by Axios. And Here is apparently how it works. So after this promise returns, then we have a dot then um, handler. And we're actually going to set data, which is our uh, use state function up here. Response dot data. And then if there's an error, I want to console log it. Console log it. So now I added my uh, onClick handler to be handle get playlist, our function over here, where it does axios.get playlist endpoint, which is up here, and with the token and let's see if this works so I'm going to log into Spotify and I got a 401 the access token expired I wonder if it's using like a old access token and local storage if I try it now will it work playlist 
Okay, so I refreshed the page and it worked. There's probably some bug in here about the local storage and whether or not it's working correctly. I'm gonna figure this bug out later, I think. Um, but I'm pretty sure if it used an old token from local storage, so this use effect, I probably need to refactor this use effect and maybe add another dependencies array. But anyway, um, yeah, so our playlist requests uh, did work. So yeah, these are my two public playlists. My playlist one with Ariana Grande and playlist two uh, with some other songs. So yeah, that's basically it for getting Spotify uh, data. Now let's actually display the info um, now that we have proved that our network request is going through and it's responding. So, okay, one thing I wanted to add is that items looks like this. Um, I'm looking at the network request in Safari to playlists and it is, as you can see, it is an array of objects. Um, so here I eventually just want to look into each object and grab the name but there's a bunch of data in here uh, such as the display name or the images a bunch of stuff that um, you can interact with and even the tracks so uh, for now I in this next part I'm just going to try and display uh, the name for this last part I'm just going to use some experimental syntax called optional chaining. I recently learned about this syntax uh, from a blog post and I think it was released in 2020. Yes, okay, so the optional chaining operator permits reading the value of a property located deep within a chain of connected objects without having to expressly validate that each reference in the chain is valid. So instead of like throwing an error if it can't find adventurer dot dog, uh, it'll handle it more gracefully. So I'm saying if data dot items, if that's there, then I want to map the array um, and show the various item names, in this case, playlist names. So this is a very common way of displaying multiple values in an array in React. So iterating over an array and uh, showing the values in that array. So else, if nothing is there, then we want to return null or wrap the whole thing in a fragment. There we go, okay. Random semicolon still. Over here, get rid of that. Yeah. So I'm wrapping it in a fragment because React wants only one element returned from an from a component. So I have to wrap it in these little fragment tags. This it counts as like one overall component, even though there are multiple things inside of it. Okay, let's see if this works get playlists and it displays the name of the playlist. Pretty neat. Yeah, so that's basically it. How to get data from Spotify for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, feel free to like it and I'll see you in the next video.